Uh, which importance have the movement for Gurdjieff? A paramount importance, I would say. He is a protean figure with many, many aspects to him. That is unquestionable. And his protean uh, characteristic makes it very difficult for people to define him. It defeats a classification, taxonomy. And yet he himself would wish very much, I think, to have been described as a teacher of temple dances. Uh, he gave his last movement, number 39, it's called, in the 39 series, only about a week before he died. Um, so he really tried to intimate something through the movements. He spoke of them as a sacred book in which one could read, by dint of actual participation, many facts, many truths. And he gave unstintingly, always seeking uh, to find pupils who would correspond with that. Of course, he found uh, among those pupils uh, Jean de Satzman, who carried on his work after he died. Uh, I think there are different decrees of the movement. What are the different decrees of the movement, the different forms of it? Well, I don't know quite what you mean by degrees. There are different degrees of competence, from beginners to very skilled uh, and practiced uh, dedicated dancers. Uh, there are ways in which one can classify these movements. There are very strong, vigorous, uh, so-called dervish movements for men. There are very subtle and uh, moving, uh, aesthetically beautiful women's dan dances. There are what Gurdjieff called the obligatories. These obligatories are six preliminary dances, which give, as it were, the repertoire, the ABC of the movements. All the uh, people beginning to approach that, uh, that milieu have to go through that. Uh, well, uh, I don't know about this classification of the various dances. I feel, I, though I have done it myself in my book, it's not quite what he sought. The movements are an experience. It is very, very difficult to convey to someone the degree of energy, the elevation of a vibration of feeling uh, that one can, uh, one can be graced with, I would say, if one really enters wholeheartedly uh, into a movement's class. Sometimes you can emerge so, uh, so vivified by that experience. Of course, it has its, uh, its penalty, its cost. There's a great deal of uh, struggle and search, even suffering in some of those movements. But it's something one, one tries and is prepared to pay. It relates very much, of course, to the uh, study on which you embark, and that is Gurdjieff's music because none of the movements are attempted without music. Where did Gurdjieff, is there something known, develop these movements from? How did he come to these movements? Yes. Well, it's difficult there to dogmatize. Clearly he was uh, inspired by and drew on ethnic sources. For example, there are in his repertoire of, mu of movements, uh, dances that entail rotation like, like that. Although uh, in the Gurdjieff movements the rotation is clockwise, whereas the Mevlevi do it anti-clockwise. But I think we would make a huge mistake if we merely uh, supposed that Gurdjieff reworked uh, ethnically derived dances. He caught the spirit of something there, but I, I believe him to have been a choreographer of, of genius. I don't know if you know that uh, Lincoln Kirstein, who has a big position in ballet in New York and worked with Balanchine and so on, said that all that he, Lincoln Kirstein, had uh, attempted in the dance was owed to Gurdjieff. Uh, Kirstein was at the Priory briefly. So, uh, reverting to your question, where did Gurdjieff derive these dances? I would say he derived them inside himself, 
as much as to say that he derived them in any geographical terrain.